Hello Sax friend, Kadrian here, the Sax Habit Coach. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you how to create an effective practice plan. Now, practice has three stages. There is a pre-practice stage, there's an in-practice stage that has three parts, and there is a post-practice stage. Now, you can download this fillable and clickable PDF file at the link in the description below as you'll be using this as a guide, as a map to create your weekly practice sessions. Now we'll begin with the pre-practice stage because success doesn't just happen, it's planned for. And as Jim Rohn puts it, never begin the day until it is finished on paper. You don't want to waste time in the practice room trying to figure out what you should be working on or what you worked on yesterday, but you want to get straight to the heart of the matter. If you were going to build a house, you would sit down with an architect, design a plan for your house. Or if you're a pilot, you wouldn't wait until you're midair before you try to figure out if the aircraft has enough fuel to take you to the end of your journey, would you? So you want to plan out your weekly practice sessions. And as you plan, you want to keep in mind in the pre-practice stage what you want. And that takes into account your goal or goals. Dennis Waitley puts it this way. The reason most people never reach their goals is that they don't define them or ever seriously consider them as believable or achievable. Winners can tell you where they're going, what they plan to do along the way, and who will be sharing the adventure with them. So you want to decide what you want. You want to sit down and set your goals because if you aim at nothing, you hit nothing, according to the movie Shang-Chi. And Zig Ziglar puts it this way, unless you have a definite, precise, clearly set goal, you are not going to realize the maximum potential that lies within you. So you want to decide what is it that you want. Okay, you you want to bake a cake. What kind of cake? You have to be more specific. You want to bake a chocolate cake. Then after that, you have to figure out the recipe and all the ingredients that will be used to make that cake. And once you have that, you have to figure out what is it that you already have and what you don't have so that you can go shopping for all the ingredients that you don't have. Then you will mix all the ingredients you have and follow some steps and make your cake, bake your cake, test and taste your cake. If your cake didn't turn out so well, then you will go back to the mixing stage rather than going from the beginning. If it turned out very well, then you will share your cake with your friends, family, maybe neighbors, and eventually you may open your own bakery or pastry shop. The next thing that you want to do in the pre-practice stage is that you want to focus on your energy, ensuring that you are fully hydrated, you're well rested, and there is enough inside of you as it really relates to fuel so that you can go throughout your practice session. One of the mistakes that a lot of saxophone players make is that they turn up to the practice room very tired and because of that they cannot focus and therefore they spend 15 minutes, 45 minutes, even an hour and afterwards they feel as though they've never accomplished anything because they didn't have enough energy to take them through the practice session. The next thing that you want to do in the pre-practice stage is to gather all your tools, your manuscript paper, your your pencil, your eraser, the music you will be using, whether those are audio files or sheet music, all the tools that you will need because you already start the journey. You can't figure out on the journey what you want. You'll be wasting time. So you gather all the tools. The next thing you want to do in the pre-practice stage is to do your gear testing. So you've bought a new mouthpiece or a new ligature or you've bought a new microphone. You want to test those outside of your practice session in the pre-practice stage so that when you get in practice, you can focus on the material itself because it can become very overwhelming, very frustrating, trying to use a new mouthpiece with new reads trying to learn a new tune at the same time and therefore you will get nowhere and you wouldn't turn up to a live event with a new microphone and start testing the mic while the show is on its way would you no you wouldn't because that would be a disaster the next thing you want to do is to develop a practice mindset in the pre-practice stage where you're thinking about practice not as a chore but as a process that you enjoy because it's the process the system that is going to get you to the goal that you would have already set at the beginning also the practice mindset involves listening to tunes and watching the video courses you have bought regarding learning the saxophone before you get into the practice session 
session so that you can pick apart the parts that you will be focusing on rather than trying to watch and learn those parts while you're in practice. You learn the tunes outside of the practice room so that when you sit down with your horn, you can transcribe the music to your horn. The next thing you want to do is to get rid of distractions. Close out your browsers before you start practicing. Put your phone on airplane mode and you let your family, friends, even the pets understand that the next 15, 45 minutes to an hour, you will be focusing on what you will be doing. In your plan, you want to include a warm-up section and you want to spend technically 25 to 30 percent of your practice time when you get in the in-practice stage using the warm-up that you would have put into your plan and you want to work on your sound such as your long tones overtones or mouthpiece practice only then you work on some technical studies like scales and scale patterns then you want to also record yourself and this includes two parts where you are recording what you have practiced and this PDF file has the document for you to record all the stuff that you will be practicing all these are fillable and then you will record yourself on your phone or on a recording device so that you can give yourself some feedback at the end of your practice when you are outside of the practice room and then you want to take breaks in between your practice or while you are practicing the big mistake that a lot of saxophone players make is they sit down for three hours straight and they wear out their embouchure their fingers and their bodies by by playing for three hours straight. What you want to do is use the Pomodoro technique. You set a timer for 20 or 25 minutes, and every time it goes off, you take a five minute break, you drink some water, you stretch, you walk around, do not go on social media, okay? Uh, and you use that as a way to recoup as you go along. In the in-practice stage, you want to focus on learning new material. So you'll spend 40 to 50% of the time on this part alone, because eventually you'll be going to gigs or going to function to play to actually play music so you will spend most of the time or a half of your time learning new materials you learn melodies pieces work on etudes learn new licks and phrases and you improvise over the changes then the next thing that you want to include in your plan is playing for fun and you will spend 25 to 30 minutes of your practice time just having fun with the music relax put on the tune the backing track you play along and don't overthink or force it just let the music play you instead of you playing the music and then you use whatever you would have learned in the warm-up or the new repertoire section while you have some fun and then like we said earlier you record yourself and you take breaks accordingly then finally we get to the post practice stage spend five to ten minutes doing this you clean your gear you swab your instrument you put away your music and music materials you clean your workspace to prepare for the next practice session and then then you take some R&R. &R. So after the practice is fully completed, you go take a walk or take a nap. I find that after I practice for two to three hours, it's good to take a 10 or 15 minutes nap and that will help me to recoup, to just step away from the music and that gives me more fun in looking forward to the next practice session. And then one bonus tip, seek mentorship. When you have somebody to hold you accountable and somebody to help guide you along the way, you will learn faster. You will learn more in three months having a mentor than you would learn in three years by yourself. Remember, you can download this fillable, clickable PDF file at the link in the description below. And remember to subscribe to the channel. And as always, Saxo Friend, push, play until something happens. Peace.